Hey folks, welcome back to Crypto Heartbeat. This is Matt and I am so excited. This is not your normal interview. You've seen Sandra Larson before, but you have not met Kimberly Gamble, the CEO of the Thrive Movement, the producer, the writer, the director of the Thrive Movies. It is an honor to have you on Crypto Heartbeat. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. And thank you, Sandra, for making the introduction. It is so great. Sandra and I spent some time. She's really the one that's introduced me to, to Thrive and to what you're doing. <clears throat> and of course, I've watched both films, but I want the audience to understand what kind of the context of all this is, because it may be their first uh, you know, exposure to what you're doing. And you've been doing this for quite some time. Yes, we have. It's been decades. Uh, my partner in all of this is my husband, Foster Gamble. So yeah, we did Thrive One, came out 11, 11, 11. So that's over wow. 10 years ago. And it's been a year now since Thrive Two has been out. So yeah, we've been, we've been on it. So what's that? I mean, obviously, the, the, what's the inspiration for making a feature film? Because that's not a small task. And mm -hmm. so what, what's the origin of that? Is it that medium yeah. and that decision to go with a feature film? Yeah, so we made uh, two feature documentaries. And the reason, the first one was, that we, we sort of dove in to, to figuring out what is in the way of people thriving. I mean, if you look at the planet and the possibilities, and then you see the state of things. And as we pulled on the strings and did that, what was like an eight year research project, we did not start out with what we ended up with um, because it just happened that every time we pulled on a string, it led back to the same sort of agenda to, that was poised to lead pretty much where we are right now uh, in the world. And so we thought, what is the minimum sufficient understanding that people need to have in order to see how this consolidation of power and wealth and control is happening, where it's headed and what we can do about it. And that was the point of Thrive One. So it just sort of skimmed the surface of a whole array of things. We got into money and energy and education and the environment and just how it all ties together. So that, that was it. It's like, how could we just lay this out with the bare minimum? And we definitely never intended on a Thrive Two uh, when we did that. Wow. Well, I, I will say this. The thing I'm most impressed with is it's very rare to see a combination of I think you know people have these uh, stereotypes of things that might seem to be um, very theoretical, spiritual, maybe new agey, matching up with something that actually is reflected in conservative circles of sovereignty and freedom and individual liberty. And what was so refreshing to me was you weren't just talking about it. This wasn't just hey, look how bad these things are. You actually provided a framework, and that to me is something that is very, very forward thinking. And I'd love for you to hear, you know, you started that in 2011 and you brought that framework to the table. That has certainly blossomed in this last decade. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I, I think we were ahead of our time. It was yeah. so controversial. Uh, it has over, I think it's 97 million documented views. It's in 27 different languages. And some of those are happening now. Like I think we have several hundred thousand views a month now of Thrive One, we never advertised it. It just sort of took out. It's a very grassrootsy kind of movement because it empowers grassroots sovereign, you know, engagement. And it's absolutely transpolitical. We are not left or right. We see this as something having to, based in human sovereignty and freedom is where the solutions lie. So we, um, yeah, we put it out and it was really controversial at the time and we got all kinds of pushback and stuff. And now it's like, oh yeah, that, you know, so many people yeah. are more open to it. And now we're going through with Thrive 2, which I honestly just think is also a little bit ahead of its times. I think it's also catching up and the, just so people know the point of that is, so in Thrive One, where we lay out the, the problem, we spend a good time on the solutions to say, look, there are solutions for every single problem everywhere that there is something wrong there, people working to make it right. And so we ended up hearing from people from all over the world and 
it was so interesting. We kind of divvied up, you know, who would pay attention to what that was coming in. And, and we'd sit down at dinner and compare notes and share. We were so excited. We thought like if 1% of the things we're hearing about is real, yeah. there is so much that can unlock here for the planet in terms of energy and just whole new models for currencies. We said in Thrive One, yeah. new currencies is what it was all about, you know, all that kind of stuff. So here we are over those years being exposed to all kinds of innovations in technology and systems. And so we would have our friends come to visit and they would be so bummed out about the state of the world. And we'd be like, oh, but don't you know about this and this and this? And we were so on fire. And it was kind of a taboo subject for a while, Thrive Too. It was like, oh my God, it was so much work. And then it just happened. It was like, you know, we've seen too much to keep it to ourselves. We, we got a film crew and we just, we went to every continent. We explored fabulous, wild innovators from all over the place in every sector. And we sort of documented that, look, the solutions are here. And, and what's really in the way of them is our relationship to authority, yeah. that we have given up that over to people as we certainly see playing out now in relation to our bodies and who, who owns your body for God's sake, you know? Yeah. So we, we really kind of go right at that in, in uh, thrive too and encourage people by showing demonstrably what it is that's already here and available. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, one of the things that, you know, if I kind of look at the core of everything you talk about, I come from a Christian worldview, but everything you talk about is aligned with that worldview as well. And I think what's really fascinating is it becomes very accessible, but I want to compliment your courage because one of the things that's very difficult is for, um, is for folks to step out and lead. Right. And it's what we need more than ever is for folks to normalize this stuff. And you're doing a high quality feature film. You're sharing with people, um, you know, the truths of these innovations. But also, I think what is really interesting is, you know, I, I look at things from the perspective of of creation. Right. And I see the this this amazing thing that we, you know, from one angle we look at and we go, we drill down and we go, hold on, maybe Tesla was right. Maybe we do have an ether and this background energy and, you know, Mark Roden and the Roden coils and mathematics and Tesla's 369. And you start getting into this stuff and you say, you know, for me, I go, I'm not surprised at all that there is an architect and that this energy and the abundance that's created is actually good. Yeah. Um, and that the forces that are out there against it, it it's this discovery process that, um, that leads us somewhere. And, you know, for, in my vernacular, it would be the heavens declare. And this oh. idea that all of it internally is connected with us and with each other. And one of the things that stuck out to me in, in Thrive 2 was this idea of decentralization. And, you know, one of the things that uh, the founder of, of Hacks talks about is this idea that, you know, we, we need to fix the money first, right? This root problem of resourcing. And, you know, one of the things that is amazing to me is that we're going through this kind of crisis era right now. We're, we're pushing back on authoritarianism and all of that. And what I really love about what you're doing and, and encouraging and stepping out to is I really believe that the folks that are in the, in the crypto space are finding themselves in such uh, an abundance. I mean, we're talking, you know, the group in, in, uh, in for example, Hacks and Pulse Chain, there was a 10,000 X return. It was the number one asset in 2020. And there are people who put in uh, $1,000 now have 10 million. I love That's it. never happened before. And what's amazing about it is without Satoshi giving this one thing, this decentralized thing, and what it does is it's, you know, you talk about infinite resolution. And I love this idea that everything is really a picture of the same thing, right? Everything in yeah. movement and rotation and in balance and there's something really powerful about um, this nature of um, sharing and giving away of centralized authority, which actually makes things thrive. Can you speak to that conceptually? Because I think it's super powerful. Yeah, I mean, I see it. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you about the courage. And I, and I want to 
speak to that for a second and then yeah. about the decentralization because I think they're both really important because I certainly agree that you know when you can control the money you can control everything from there that's true and I believe that it's a combination of consciousness and money yeah. that are sort of the primary pivot points and courage is an it's an interesting um phenomenon related to self-knowing, related to spirituality, related to our relationship to the heavens, the ethers, the field, whatever you want to call it. But um, we're doing a show on the 29th of January that your group might be list, uh, interested in with uh, Bobby Kennedy oh, wow. and my um, partner, Foster Gamble. So we have at Thrive Now, what we're focused on are two things. One's the Freedom Portal where he just kind of does a deep dive into the things that we bring up in the movie. And you can always have a free trial and the event with Bobby's free and all of that. And I, the reason I'm mentioning it is so at thriveon.com, you can uh, see thrive Two, um, thrive one, thrive Two, get to the freedom portal, all that, but we're going to be talking about courage um, because for those of us who have, you know, had to take a lot of pushback from our families and from the world and had, um, yeah, it's just a whole different thing. There, Nobody stands up and speaks their truth these days without encountering some resistance. And so what is it that makes it worth it to do that? And how can we do that while maintaining our connection? Yeah. And, and it's interesting. I have one thing on my board on um, that gold board is the thing that's where everything gets done. If I write it on that, cause I can't miss it every time I'm in my office. And one of the things it says is um, I'm a friend of your soul and an enemy of your project. <laughs> and uh, that is my mantra here. And it, and it can be true, whether it's with my friends and family who I'm really disagreeing with about what's going on and how to handle it, or whether it's people in the world who are actually creating this, but to maintain that connection, because it is so, we are one, we are connected. And then from that, to be able to work as hard as I can to stop a project. And, and I was talking to, um, Bobby Kennedy about it and what that is for him and how it gets beyond hope and despair and becomes just simply a matter of personal alignment. And, and I think that that's a really important exploration in the world of courage. So knowing your purpose and who you are and the comfort that you can have when you speak your truth as challenging as it is, and it is. So I don't want to under you know, play that down. But anyway, so thank you on the courage. And Absolutely. I think people might be interested in that conversation. I know I am. Um, yeah. And as far as, um, did you want to say something, Sandra? Just that freedom. Moment? I mean, that's yeah. our inalienable right, right? Yeah. Um, as far as decentralization. So for me, what I have seen is that, you know, I love people. I believe that um, there are just fabulous creative uh, offerings that really are to be made. And that when people take the time and have the opportunity and let go of the fear and restraints and conditioning and all the rest in order to look inside, what they'll find is there's some passion in there that they really are longing to contribute into this world. And if ever there were a time, now is it. We are in a really dire state. We need people to rise up and we need all people to do whatever they're here to do. And I, so I'm not a believer in one solution. I'm a believer in like, get it out there, innovate. First of all, repression and suppression always follow innovation. They don't even know what's coming, right? So we can always stay ahead in that regard. Yeah. And then also we get to have purposeful, energized lives, which is what happens when you live your purpose. So what we're focused on right now is this thing we're calling the Thrive Solutions Hub. And it's really a web app that's um, designed to help people find, well, first of all, get in touch with what is their purpose. And then also find each other based on location and topic and passion and all of that. So that mm -hmm. with a, you know, hey, I'm, I'm very interested in the mandate and stopping that. And so how do I find other people and what aspect of it am I interested in? And 
you know, there's a group working to take it on internationally, for example, to in a court of public opinion, that's Fulmec. And then there's Children's Health Defense is going to take it on nationally with lawsuits to prevent these mandates. And then there's someone else over here who's going to write a song about it that helps at a rally to gather people around. And somebody else over here who's going to figure out some alternative, you know, school where kids can go. There's so many ways to get at it. And it happens by that, through that sort of decentralized approach, in my opinion. And it also means whether it's technology, education, food, art, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just bring something to it. And we certainly see the glories of that with the economy right now and the blockchain and crypto. I love it. Well, and it's, you know, in my opinion, it is going to be transformational because so many regular people that don't have political power, don't have military power, but now have financial power are literally going to be able to be the investors in what has been in the past labeled fringe or you know, alternative type of solutions. And to me, you know, that's what's so exciting about, you know, this group that, that I talk to a lot, our audience is one that, um, you know, they're, they're looking for things to find ways in which they can make the world a better place. And they realize they're coming into a major windfall that um, could be very useful. I mean, I, I talked to a gentleman who's in real estate. He's just an average guy in real estate. And he said, you know, I sacrificed a half a million to, to Pulse Chain. And, you know, one of the targets in two years is a dollar, a dollar Pulse Chain. That's $5 billion. And this guy looked at me and he's like, I have absolutely no idea what I would do. And I think about this idea of having the tools and the framework to identify what your purpose is. And I, what I love about decentralization is no one's dictating what you support. No, no, this is something that's in your heart. And I do believe that you will be told. Right. If you reflect, you will be told where to go and what to do. And I think it's really, it's really great that there are tools to help people accomplish that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, and sometimes it's so simple as like I remember when I was raising my kids, I said, pay attention to what gives you energy. Yeah. yeah. Because when you, you know, if you're just all I in those days, it was, you know, if you walked into a room and there were books and videos on any imaginable subject which one would you choose if no one were looking, you know, because whatever that is, go for it, like be with the people who give you energy and all the rest. And, I, you know, I'm so excited about these pioneers in crypto having resources now because it's selected for a pioneering spirit, right? Most people at this stage in crypto have some kind of pioneering spirit about them. And the real solutions are have are like fringe they're decentralized wild it's like the mess of freedom is what needs to be empowered just like the mess of crypto i mean it's a wild west out there you know? totally. and you you have to kind of have a certain way to be like yeah we're going here oh that didn't work okay this will work try that there and um i i'm excited because i've had to raise lots of money to do what we're doing to support you know, inventors of alternative health technologies, alternative energy technologies, people who were not going to get money from, uh, you know, traditional investors uh, at the time. And it was, you know, at, at a certain point, I think if crypto hadn't come along, honestly, I would just be like, I think I'm done with this because yeah, yeah. the consciousness, it was just such a drag to wade through well, I just have to make sure mm -hmm. that I'm protecting all my wealth. It's like, what world are you going to be wealthy in? Right. You know, yeah. I mean, that's the bottom line right now yeah. is what world are you going to use this prosperity in? And if we don't fund the solutions that we're all working on, it is not going to be a pretty picture. Not only no. can they, you know, take it, they can control you and they can do a lot of things that make it sort of useless to be to be rich. And I, and so I'm excited now because I want to work with the folks in your network who see what's needed and know that, yes, you can end up prosperous from this and you can also end up living your purpose by empowering the things that need to be done. Uh, yes. So I, I love it. I love the people who I've been meeting uh, from crypto and I want to learn more about Hex. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that, um, 
that I was really interested in. And it's just a personal passion that I saw you identify in Thrive 2 <clears throat> is technology. And, you know, I think a lot of people who have followed alternative energy solutions have known that there's been a lot of suppression of really good solutions. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to ask you, and this may be, um, you've seen a lot, right? And there's only so many things that got into Thrive too. I know there's a lot yeah. more. <laughs> Can you give us an idea, and obviously not naming specifics, but what are you most excited about in the area of energy in our future? I think what I'm most excited about in the world of energy is that uh, it's possible to empower decentralized communities. And right now with the centralized grid, what happens is everybody becomes dependent in a certain way and it can be cut off in a certain way. And that's a huge controlling opportunity, which is why there has been so much suppression. So I'm one excited because it can empower people's freedom and sovereignty. And the other thing is that the new energy technologies that we explored are they're tapping into the field of energy and that field that Tesla was talking about and demonstrated. It's not, it's not far-fetched. I mean, it's so funny that it's made to be so, but in any case, um, it demonstrates something that I think is so fundamentally reassuring and calming and empowering, which is we're not alone. We are part of this infinite, alive universe. There's a life force, and you can call it any number of things. The reason it works for Christianity, it works for all that acknowledges this life, life force and direction of, of life-giving energy. And you can tap into that. And it's there's a lot of tricks to it, and there are a lot of charlatans in it, and there's all kinds of things. We certainly kissed a lot of frogs in our um, bet. endeavors here, you know, but we also were able to find people where I have personally witnessed um, technologies in both healing and pulling in energy. And with energy technology, it's both tapping into it, which you could call generation, but it's kind of like you generate a baby, like, where does it yeah. come from? You know? Right, right, right. Um, so uh, there's generation and then there's transmission and then there's storage. And those are all issues that have huge impact on the environment and on our relationship with the environment. And to know that, you know, there's like, there are alter alternatives to 5G. We demonstrate in Thrive 2 um, something where the basically the Tesla tower was rebuilt by these uh, Corman brothers. And um, that's an exciting one because that's continuing and that's an investment opportunity. In fact, that we've um, kept up with since Thrive 2 people came on to say, okay, we want to help with that. There's room for that in this. There's new energy technology investment opportunities. There's health technology. There's... Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much. And then there's the Thrive Solutions Hub where we're looking for investors and also for nonprofit donations, however somebody wants to do it, to further this. And they can reach me at info at thriveon.com uh, to, to look into that because, you know, money and organization and the team and the vision, it takes all of it. We've yep. got the team, we've got the vision, we've got the strategy, we've got the tools and we need the money. We, Foster and I spent... It's funny when I was listening to one of your um, uh, talk that you gave, and it was so articulate and just sort of cut straight to it about what's the use of money, right? What it, what's, what is it for here? What are we here for? And what's the money for? Anyway, that's kind of a question besides you, you know, go spend it and do something fun you always thought would be fun to do when you first get it. But then it comes down to what, what's the world we're creating with it. And um Foster and I had money and we spent it. We, we funded Thrive One and the movement and stuff ourselves. And we didn't really think that we weren't that long, long term thinking about it um, in terms of we wanted it to be able to make money, put the money in and have the money come back. But the movie ended up free. We didn't end up making the money back. So when it came time to fund all this next stuff, we had to raise money for it. 
And that was really a whole new world was to get into the world of money raising. It was obviously a lot more fun to be able to just fund it ourselves and do what we wanted to do and not have to do any of that. But in fact, what's happened is that we're gathering a team of people with resources who now want to fund this. They want to fund each other's projects. There's all kinds of cross-pollination that's going on now from the funding team at Thrive On. And that's really fun too. So as much as I had to wade through stuff. So anyway, there are fa fabulous energy technologies. They have been horribly suppressed. And in addition to that, I will say from personal experience, that most of the inventors are pretty wild people. Mm -hmm. They're geniuses and, and that genius is an extreme quality. So it renders them great in certain capacities and fairly unworkable in others. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, business is generally not the strong suit. And so a lot of them have gotten into kind of a mess of a situation with their companies. Like, it is not for the, it's not a sissy endeavor. Like no, you start getting right. into new energy technology, you better be, it's a little like crypto. Like you better be ready to just yeah. wade through the muck, you know? Right, but right. When you do, what you get is <clears throat> these jewels of um, demonstration of what we know in our hearts. Well, and you know, it's interesting at all it all comes back to the same place. You talk about this <clears throat> energy field, right? Which is it really at the core of everything and this provision, right? That's unlimited, really. Yeah. One of the things that I've, I've sensed all my life and is I've researched alternative everything is the fact that there's an abundance in creation yes. and that, that we've created this scarcity mentality and we've fought over things and acted like they were scarce. And I think what's really interesting and what I'd love for you to either confirm or not is the fact that, you know, Tesla said that one day we will tap into the very wheel work of nature which is this, you know, this ether, this, this background field, this energy, <clears throat> and that is really ultimately frequency. What, um, if you had to give a timeline, is, is that technology that it really truly is a new energy source? Is that, is that years away? Is that possible? Is that, have you seen it? Have you seen this new energy source? Yes. Not as much as it's claimed, okay. I will say. Um, what I have seen is that it's, I'll tell you what I've personally experienced. Okay. I have seen um, energy that was not plugged into anything that was generated and that um, didn't put off any heat. Okay. And it was very interesting. And it had a white light instead of a yellow light. So it was cold white energy, which I thought was interesting because of our you know, the white halo of light and all of that yeah, things sure. that you can draw. But what I discovered in that, so I have found people who can tap into the energy and pull it in, sustaining it is the problem. Okay. Because of something that I talk about in Thrive 2, which is that stillness is not still. Mm -hmm. So there's a portal of access that happens by achieving a certain like stillness, which is really a rhythmic balanced interchange, but to maintain it requires like that constancy of being present. So it's talking about new energy technology and talking about spiritual evolution is really almost identical. Right. And it, that's how I got into the whole thing with the shaman and plant medicine. And the rest was, I was overhearing a conversation of theirs. And I told Foster, I said, I feel like I'm in a world of energy inventors here because they're talking about these same terms of frequency and resonance and alignment and stillness. And I experienced like inner peace, like you can have some pretty far out moments, right? And then having them be sustained is art of the deal. And I right. think that that's true on the technology front too. So I have personally experienced energy drawn from the ether, having it be sustained and able to integrate with the grid. I've not, that has not been developed all the way through. And the big part of the problem with that is funding. 
Okay. And I mean, because every the funders, I know plenty of people with billions of dollars. And what they say is just demonstrate it to me that it completely works from start to finish and I'm in. Yeah. And it's like, we need the money to do the development of that, to have it carry forward that, that distance. So yeah, I know the people who can do it, but uh, well, and then the suppression. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Cause I, I, we have a group called the compassion cartel and this is a group of I love people that who, name. Have, yeah, the, who have um, basically um, I, I jokingly say they're winning the lottery in slow motion and the goal is to have <laughs> A thousand people in this group who have basically earmarked essentially a million dollars a piece. And so a thousand people, a million dollars a piece. Well, that's from one sacrifice. And if they did it for the second, that would be two billion of available resources. Yeah. Well, the groups of people that are there, that's merely a token of what potentially is there. Yeah. And so just to give you an idea, I've had conversations with multiple people who, if things pan out the way we think, in about nine, nine months, they're going to have, you know, a billion and a half a piece. And so one of the things I think is really interesting, it, it's obviously not liquid, right? You, you think about how quickly you can get, you know, you'd crash the price if you tried to, you know, withdraw the ATM a, a billion and a half dollars. But yeah. what I think is really interesting and what I, I like about what you're doing is, you know, just like you said, you've waited through the muck, you've paid the dumb taxes, as people say, and you've been there. And I think that you know, you're very trustworthy. You have a framework, you've been, you know, a track record. And I think that it would be really, really nice to expose that group of people to these transformational technologies and, and, and other things, right. Whether it be in health or energy or, you know, and so, you know, that's something that I would love to, to expose. They're going to obviously see this video. Um, but I do think that, if you think about most of these folks, unlike the traditional financial world where somebody has really, really, really worked really, really hard, right? And this is, they're not going to let go of it without, you know, hardcore evidence. There are people who, like I said, put in a thousand dollars into crypto and it's now 10 million are much, much more comfortable investing in things that are, um, that are maybe less traditional. And so there is, in my opinion, a renaissance of resources coming to you. And I think the more that we can connect people to the areas where they feel like their purpose is, um, you know, I'm particularly interested in energy, but you know, a lot of these things that were taboo and were um, conspiracy related. I yeah. mean, just look at what the government's done with, uh, with uh, UFO technology. I mean, yeah, there, right. there's a lot we don't know. And so. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I love it. And I appreciate that. And that's just who we, who we want to work with. And in the world of health, I mean, I'll tell you there, I have, I have experienced quantum healing. I have dem, you know, like I have felt cancer tumors disappear under my hand in real time um, from various technologies where the people are off in, you know, Africa and various places hiding because of what that does to disrupt Uh, what's going on here now, but a lot of them are coming out. Now, not everybody has that, but people have some really good healing technologies. And I think that we need them now. There are a lot of people who have um, been injected with this experimental substance. And, um, as, and now, you know, as of this month, January, 2022, they're saying that in order to qualify as being vaccinated and therefore participate in all of the, you know, benefits of society and your job and everything else, um, that means that you're up to date, which can include numerous vaccines and even boosters, whatever that, whatever it ever changing, you know, definition. And I think that there are going to be many, many people who say, wait a minute, you know, I did this, I did one, I did two, I did some number of this thing, believing that I was going to be helping and be able to move on. And now my job's at stake, and I can't participate. And wait a minute, get this stuff out of my body when they start um, figuring out what it's really all about. And I would love to see funding come in for these various healing um, technologies now to come and be applied to help people clean clean up in any way that we can. And I think it's going to take some pretty radical approaches yeah. um, to get this stuff out. Cause I think it's a very high tech substance 
that's been made and um, we got to got some real work to do there. So yeah, bring it on. I mean, the, the funding and the, just that um, team spirit that we're in it together and that we can use our resources to help. I mean, that's not everybody has it. Not everybody put in a thousand dollars with right. that kind of like, let's see where it goes. And those who did it, that's the, that's the spirit. Right. Right. And there's, and it's, um, and it's continuing to grow. I mean, DeFi has been really what has, you know, exploded this, this uh, kind of wealth creation and the tokenization of communities. And so I think we're going to see some amazing things happen. I really appreciate your time. I wanted to ask you kind of a final question. I know you've got limited time and, yeah. and, and so you've been exposed to so many cool things, right? You've been involved in so many things. You know, I mentioned energy. That's kind of a, a pet interest of mine. But if you were to have to pick something that you're most excited about for the future that you have seen that others might not know about, what would you say? Wow, that's a good one. It's funny, Foster and I were just saying the other night how we wouldn't trade anything in our lives for the adventures that we've been able Mm -hmm. to have. Um, You know, (laughs) I think it's in the realm of consciousness. Okay. Um, actually, because I mean, seeing and having dear friends healed of things and, you know, that is obviously huge and the energy, all of it, the thing about consciousness and recognizing that we're infinite and that all of these cures are actually born of that possibility, that understanding is the foundation from which all of the other innovations and technologies emerge. And there's something um, that takes away fear Mm. and that takes away the impulse to surrender to authority. When we know that we are consciousness, we are it, we are the field. We're these like, you know, we're like a whirlpool in water. So if water's infinite potential and we are whirlpools within it, we are also. And I think that that knowing makes everything else possible. And I see it happening. Like I see that uh, even with the whole AI stuff, which we have really got to watch out for, it also reveals things that are very telling about the world of possibility. So we need to be able to sift through um, the muck. Of, I mean, even, even crypto and the blockchain, you can use anything. You can gather data and use it for all kinds of nefarious things, or you can use it to empower whole new decentralized solutions. So, yeah, I think the, and the, you know, I was always fascinated by things that were outside of um, like, you know, telepathy or remote viewing or yeah. psychic phenomenon and those kinds of things that seem far out. But once you've had an experience, you've had an experience and you know, it's, if it can happen once, it can happen again. And right. by definition, it's therefore not impossible. And these things have demonstrated they happen once. And I think my favorite thing about the people that we've met, the wild inventors all over the world, is that many of them speak to that. They say they started because they had an experience and it was like, if it can happen once, it can happen again. What is the, anom- what is the principle behind the anomaly right. that would allow us to replicate it? And that is what's happening with these new uh, blockchain technologies. Like, well, wait, if this could happen here, Right. But it, how do we work with that? So, yeah, I think it's in the world of consciousness, probably. Um, well, I want to, I want to, I'm going to go on a bit of a rabbit hole just because I feel led to. So, and I'd love your commentary on this. You know, there's a lot of evidence that suggests that as we collect a number of souls together and individuals together in common purpose, um, you look at blockchain and really all it is, is an agreement between parties, right? An agreement that something has value, it creates value. Um, Richard Hart will often say, he goes, if you want a drawing of a swan, draw one. You've created something, right? Now you have a picture of a swan. 
And, you know, you think about this idea of creation and of intention and consciousness. And one of the things I think is really interesting, I have a number of doctor friends who see miracles all the time, and a lot of them are associated with meditation and prayer. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really interesting, and I want want to kind of get this, you know, there are many on the scientific side who have said, um, you know, the, the Princeton eggs and the global consciousness project and all of this kind of data that su- suggests that as a, we see ourselves as individuals, but we also recognize that we are connected in this, you know, collective kind of consciousness itself. And that if we can only essentially be like minded in the sense of, you know, massive numbers of people that we would see, um, the miraculous, meaning we would see, you know, I've had experiences health wise and with others that literally almost that the more that come together, the more effect it has. And that there would be this, you know, with internet technology and blockchain resources, the more that we can come together and unify in our desire to focus our attention. And, I, and it, it, it makes me think of this. Let's say, you know, a good friend has cancer. And you're really good at Facebook and you're really good at promoting it, right? And you know, all these people from all across the world of every religion and of every, you know, every type of person from everywhere. And you said, would you please focus your attention, your intention, your meditation, your prayer, and all these things here, here, right? Um, It seems like to me that there is something about that that is extremely powerful that is kind of where, what you're talking about is that, is there a way in which we could come together to literally heal each other through this force? What do you say? Yes. I, I mean, I, I believe so. I, I experienced that in, you know, my versions of it. It's, I'm so, I'm such a um, combination of practical and um, etheric, I guess. I don't know what, mm-hmm. what to call the difference, but um, this thing that we came up with in Thrive 2, which when we traveled all over was that the notion of everybody agreeing on things and really coming together, I don't believe that that will happen. Okay. What I do believe is that we could agree that we won't um, violate anyone against their will. And with that principle alone, that the, you know, Gandhi and King said that's the yep. bottom line. Yep. That that if we agree to, it's one thing. Nobody wants to be violated against their will. If you want to be violated, it's not against your will, right? So all, you'd really clean that. If that one principle, to me, would allow us to figure out how to live on the planet with our differences, and to me. Those unions of people who like I've been working on that with my family. Like we have really different ideas about what's going on in the world. Some of my kids and yeah, all of that. And it's like, okay, how do we do this? How do we make sure that love prevails and that we do this in a way that doesn't violate the sovereignty of one another? And it is a, it's not that easy. It's a simple notion, but it's not easy to pull off. And to me, that really inspires me. I feel like the power of our love, like when we were all together recently, I don't know, over the holidays at one point, it felt like this is more powerful right now than it used to be when we were all just kind of cruising along, agreeing on stuff. So what you're talking about, I feel is absolutely possible. And of course, when we get together with people with whom we are in sync, it's like, whew, this, this is this is very powerful. Um, so yes, I'm all for our um, gathering together in all kinds of configurations. And I would say that principle is the one that drives me in thinking we have an actual practical way through this uh, with that. One of the things that we witness in this community is, you know, probably the only thing that's going well in this world right now, if many say, is is crypto. And it's this beacon of light. And what's interesting is Within our community, Sandra and I are in this community of folks who, um, you know, it's 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 actually re- so refreshing because the the content um, and the commentary is not divisive because we all know that the only way that we all get what we want is by 
um, working together, right? Winning yeah. together. And, exactly. and this idea yeah. of um, John Nash's equilibrium, right? This idea of considering yeah. what's best for others and what's best for yourself. And what's so neat about that is there's not discussions and divisions on the normal lines that you see people dividing us. And there's something really interesting about money that I think a lot of people think, oh, this is going to solve my problem. And it's almost the, the beauty of it is that you discover something greater in community when you're seeking that thing that you will think will answer your problems. And so this, um, this byproduct of rowing together has become um, what I would really say is a, um, an agreement to love one another. I think at the core. And so I'm just, I just wanted to kind of validate what you're saying. We're yeah, thank you. I, I love that. Well, there's lots more to talk about. Yes, I, yes, I know for my 96 year old mom every Wonderful. afternoon at this time. So I'm going to go, but I yes. really, um, I have loved this. I would love to talk to you more about Hex Yes. Um, and learn about that and connect with um, people in your network and encourage you all to go to thriveon.com and uh, check out Thrive One and Thrive Two and the Freedom Portal and um, then see if you're interested in investing in, um, yeah, Thrive On and the Solutions Hub that we're doing now. So I love it. I love yeah. what you're doing. Thank you so much. Yes. I really appreciate this opportunity and um, I'm really I would really here. like to follow up. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. We'll Thank do you. That. Thank yeah. you, Kimberly. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll okay. talk to you. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Bye for now. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>